Greetings, my fellow sim loves and sovereign thinkers. This is L3's Jewish Podcast. Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful Swampy Mango in South Florida, and today's date is Thursday, December 12th, 2018. So let us begin. Oh, hey folks, thank you for tuning in. Beautiful day in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Nice and cool, around the 60s, I would say, maybe low 70s. Some people still on their sweatshirts. <laughs> hey, I lived out here for 41 years. I love it every time. So, um, yeah, so we're going to be, uh, you know, talking about a few things. It looks like George Herbert Walker Bush is finally laid to rest. And many people that I know are really critical when they call him a great president and patriot. Sometimes I can use the word blasphemy in good faith based on his past practices. But I'll be digressing. So I'm just going to leave it at that. A lot of stuff is happening in the notification world within the United States. Texas has got a few things handy, especially with the whole gun sanctuary state memorandum or referendum. And even uh, civil forfeit a- um, asset forfeiture in that state. And Ohio has uh, got one on the, on the floor pending, which is uh, industrializing hemp to say no to the federal prohibition. I think it's fantastic. Because one thing you got to look at, folks, notification does make a difference. That's why when people say, oh, how do you want to see people protest in the streets like you in Paris? Well, like I said, notification. We got it. It can be implemented. You don't complain, you take action. That's how it has to be. Educate yourselves, too, along the way and share with others. So listen to bobbleheads. That's where you be more of a informed activist in your own avenue. And I know right now stuff is going on on some social media sites to do more censorship on certain content. Including Facebook, of course, and a few others is obvious. And even uh, Tumblr has made an announcement about that as well. And uh, someone's going to do an intake, an intake about Venezuela. And um, Another one too is a biometric technology. It's like it's going to be, they're going to bring it to the Atlanta International Airport. So we can all hold hands and go, I am a real American. I pull down my pants for the establishment. Correct. The post 9 11 world. Make us feel safe. I will give up my personal freedom for security. Even though if the criminal elements in my government are considered terrorists, that's an exception. A lot of mind control going on as usual. But you don't get I don't get mad, but rather be inspired. That's what the movement's about. So yes, it is an exciting time to be alive. And many of people are worried about the whole thing going on in Washington DC. I say, you know what? Don't sweat it. You don't want to blow the finger pointing and want to do the partisan blame game. It's all nothing more than garbage anyway. Alright, well, I'm going to be talking about this on biometrics scanning. It's happening at the Atlanta airport from the organicprepper.com. Good site. Describe through her news, uh, her link. You'll be surprised. It's got good books, good media, plenty of merit. And this one here says biometric scanning has rolled out in Atlanta International Airport. One look and you're in. Woo, wow. So that's their version of um, getting rid of the TSA, right? We'll just use biometric scanning. So we'll start off here. It's by Meadow Clark. Airport, Atlanta Airport Terminal F has become the first biometric terminal in the United States. And Detroit is next. As of December 1st, Delta Airlines rolled out biometric scanning for air travel at the Hartfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport Terminal F. International passengers will be able to use facial recognition scan to curb to gate to get through every facet facet of their air travel. While the face scans are are loaded as a great way to save time, they really aren't, as you'll see below. 
I'm sure any travel weary person can think of many ways that air travel could be more convenient and efficient. I mean, one of the strangest paradoxes of our technologically advanced world is that it's 2018 and air travel is the most miserable experience. Thank you, New World Order, for making that possible. It becomes more miserable every year and no, and no one even wants to hear comedians talk about it anymore because miserable air travel is such a foregone conclusion. Not to be me, but people have already lined up before the biometric scanners like sheep, seemingly without even flinching at the new development. Ah, truth, justice, and the goody two-shoes way. One rather more like deer in the headlights. Nothing new here. But your friendly neighbor facial scans, zap. Biometric scanners are optional for now. Yeah, sounds like the body scanners, right? For now, the biometric scanners are being presented as an option. Delta et al. call in an option anytime they reference biometric scanning, perhaps to soften the edges a bit. Of course, in, the, in time, this will only be option for air travel, and Delta is in a hurry to roll out the scanners as another interna at other international airports. How much are you getting paid by the state with your tax money, friends? But please don't be don't believe the tripe about how this is going to fall for everyone's convenience. It clearly isn't when you see who Delta partnered with make to make biometric scanners a reality. Last week, Delta announced today's Delta Airlines in partnership with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection (CBP), Hartfield's Jackson Atlanta International Airport, and the Transportation Security Administration unveiled the first biometric terminal in the United States at Manyard H. Jackson International Terminal F in Atlanta, announced earlier this fall. This means that customers flying direct to an international destination on Delta, Aeromexico, Air France, KLM, or Virgin Atlantic Airways can use facial recognition technology to curb to gate, including two. Check-in at the self-service kiosk in the international lobby. Drop check, check baggage at the counter in the international lobby. Serve as identification as a TSA checkpoint. Board flight at any gate if in Terminal F and go through CBB processing for international travelers arriving into the U.S. Oh, government, without you, I will be helpless and scared and be insecure. And it's funny about the whole thing with Virgin Airlines, right? It looks like the same guy who runs Virgin International, whatever you want to call it, is um, doing the stuff on Brightline in, in South Florida. I'm just wondering if you guys go through the bias here and say, make it convenient. Yay! I wouldn't be surprised, right? We're removing the need for a customer checking a bag to present their passport up to four times per departure, which means we're giving customers the option of moving through the airport with one less thing to worry about while empowering our employees with more time for meaningful interactions with customers. Gil West, Delta's COO. Should be a K in here for, for Kook. No, uh, be K O O K. Sorry about that. How does biometric scanning work at the airport? US Today writes. Delta says customers enter their airport information during online check-in or at the airport. Customers can scan their passport to check in. The next passengers can click look as a check-in at one Delta's automated kiosk. Travelers' face scans will be matched to the passport or visa photos on file with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Delta says customers have the same option as they approach the camera at the counter in the lobby, the TSA checkpoint, or when boarding at the gate. There's a video on here. Shows you how it's done. And it's pretty cute, I would say. And was like, everyone goes a little bit haywire or going ape. Yeah, so they have people following the herd to let the cows out. 
all that good stuff. So, and the person explaining, giving you the P now microphone rhetoric. On, on look and you're on. And of course you got the prepper for the TSA. Yes, I will I am a bellboy to the to the New World Order. Is that is that do you find me attractive? Yep, you got TSA agents, John Wagner speaking about it too. This is from the Ape Associated Press. Well you know I'm not gonna watch this whole thing because I may just call them out and go, how's it feel being a bunch of trees as quacks? I will continue on here. The mainstream media is giddy for the new invasive advancements. All for a little more convenience that could exist with a little more efficiency like in other countries' international flights. The MSM, mainstream media, certainly isn't emphasizing the critics. Critics, if there are any. It is a great honor for Detroit Metropolitan Airport to become the nation's first biometric terminals. Gus Chad Newton, the interim CEO of the Wayne County Airport Authority of the Detroit Airport. We also look forward to partner with Delta, CBP, and TSA to provide passengers with the option to utilize facial recognition throughout their entire travel process. The option, while it's still an option, not mandatory, will become available to international passengers flying nonstop from Milana on Delta's partners, airlines, Air Mexico, Air France, KLM, or Virgin Atlantic. They really want you to feel that facial recognition is good. Facial recognition is good is only a problem if a social media network makes use of it without telling the public, but it is now good. Nearly all 25,000 customers who travel through Atlanta Terminal F each week are choosing this optional process with less than 2% opting out. Delta beamed. Yes, the 98% will go, yes, I will bend over so far that I'll be, uh, so my service be more efficient and based on the initial data the facial recognition option is saving an average of two seconds for each customer at boarding time that's it two seconds or nine minutes from boarding a wide-body aircraft they added wow did you hear that you're saving two whole seconds at boarding <laughs> could we say blackmail bribery Delta will introduce the curb, this curb to gate biometric option in early in Detroit, early 2019. What can I do to avoid biometric scanners at the airport? Unfortunately, facial recognition is not something most people can control anymore. It happens online via our passports and through Big Brother cameras posted in the public. Tire security measures make it more difficult to wear things that obscure your face when you go through the airport or into the bank or stores, etc. But you can refuse to travel Delta and let representatives know that you won't be voting for them if they continue to evaporate your right of privacy. In the long run, this is what we, are, we look at as the new normal. However, if your dollar still counts, why, choose, why not choose a different international airline such as Amaris Airline? Their coach flights are as nice as a first-class domestic flight in the United States, and they know it. Just look at Emirates' new um, marking campaign. It is not an endorsement, but just get a good look. And you could like see it for yourselves. Please uh, check it out. And check out the, this Lush Air Cabin Tour. Look at all the wonderful space your arms, for your arms and legs. Ah, don't fly. Fly better, says their slogan. Meanwhile, there is an American up in a Delta saying, fly better. Is that the thing? Is that thing? Is that a thing that exists? You mean I don't have to sit on this person's lap and get sneezed on and beg for, beg for more pretzels? I get free drinks from and complimentary food and hot towels. Yes, dear American. This thing does exist. Anyone who has flown to another country knows that the airport experiences there in the world is different than the U.S. You start taking off the seatbelt and shoes there, you might be stopped for, stopped for indecent exposure. I hear nothing but good things from people who have flown Emirates, although it's just one option to avoid companies like Delta. And the travelers I hear from testifying that the commercials are accurate, including the smiles from the proud employees. If this is true, Emirates Airlines has set up shop in the United States. Then all, and then our airlines would be out of business in weeks, which means things can, they can change. That's why U.S. airlines should be ashamed. 
but the miserable smelly air travel experience seems to be part of a bigger plan to crimp up the freedom to travel. What do you think about biometric scanners in airports? Are you concerned about biometric scanners as a passage to travel? Would you ever use it? Why or why not? Do you still even travel by air? Let, let us know below. Yeah, that middle clerk. Middle clerk wants to hear from you. I'm going to have to take a look. Check out this Emirates Airlines. Because uh, if they do have this, I'll try, I'll, it uh, wouldn't hurt. So, hey. That's some ways to fight a new order to get up where it hurts. What's going to happen? Does going to go to TSA Homeless Care? We need money because we're losing it because the customers are, we're losing customers. You know what I say? Who the hell cares? Scrap them. That's how I look at it. You want to play a big, you want to play, you want to have that big brother fetish? Do it on your own watch, not mine. So that's one of the areas I have to say, have to agree. Shop that don't have these particular gadgets. And another thing too, friends, every high-tech gadget has a flaw. So um, I will always look at that. Don't be surprised if these could get hacked. Don't say, I got nothing to hide. I will spread my rear end for the state. Big Brother is my Lord and Savior. Don't fall for it. And it's interesting here because, uh, speaking of facial recognition, I just look at this today. Came from The Intercept. And it says here, artificial intelligence. Experts issues urgent warning against facial scanning with a dangerous history. This is by Sam Biddle. Facial recognition has quickly shifted from techno novelty to the fact life for many with millions around the world at least willing to put up with their put up with their faces scanned by software at the airport, their iPhones or Facebook server farms. But researchers at New York University AI Now Institute have issued a strong warning against not only ambiguous facial recognition, but its more sinister cousin, so-called effect recognition technology that claims it can ha it can find hidden meaning in the shape of your nose the contours of your mouth and the way you smile if that sounds like something dredged up from the 19th century that's because it's it's sort of it sort of is AI now's 2018 report is a 53 56 page record how artificial intelligence is an umbrella term that includes a myriad of both scientific attempts to simulate human judgment and marketing nonsense continues to spread without oversight, regulation, or meaningful ethical scrutiny. The report covers a wide expanse of uses and abuses, including instances of racial discrimination, police surveillance, how to trace secrecy laws, can hide bias code from an AI surveilled public but AI now which was established last year to grapple with the social implications of artificial intelligence expresses in the document particularly particular dread over effect recognition a subclass of facial recognition that claims to detect things such as personality inner feelings mental health and workers engagement based on images or video of faces the thought of your boss watching you through a camera that uses machine learning to constantly assess your mental state is bad enough, while the prospect of police using effect recognition to deduce your future criminality based on microexpression is exceptionally worse. Exponentially worse. Excuse me. This bait, this has because effect recognition, the report explains, is a little more than the computerization of Physio, not to physiognomy, a thoroughly disgraced and deep strain of pseudoscience from another era that claim a person's character could be disearned from their bodies and their faces. In particular, there was no reason to believe this was true. The 1880s, which figures, were figures like the discredited Italian criminologist Caesar Lum, Lum, Lombroso promoted the theory, and there's even less reason to believe it today. Still an attractive idea despite his lack of grounding in any science and 
data-centric firms have leapt at the opportunity not to only put names to faces, but to ascribe entire behavior patterns and predictions to some invisible relationship between your eyebrow and nose that can only be deciphered through the eye of a computer. Two years ago, students at Shanghai University published a report detailing what they claim to be a machine learning method for determining criminality based on facial features alone. Can we say Big Brother? The paper was widely criticized, including AI's now Kate Crawford, who told The Intercept it constituted literal phrenology, just using modern tools to supervise machine learning instead of calipers. Crawford and her colleagues are now more opposed than ever to spread of this sort of culturally and scientifically regressive algorithmic prediction. Although physiomonology fell out of favor following association with the Nazi race science, researchers are worried about the emergence of psycho, ooh, physiognomic, physiognomic ideas in, a, in, a, um, in effect. Sorry about that. In effect, we're, ooh. in effect, recognitions applications. The report reads: the idea that AI systems might be able to tell us what the student, a customer, or a criminal suspect is really feeling, or what type of person they intrinsically are, is proving attractive both corporations and government. Even though the scientific ju- justifications for such claims are highly questionable and the history of the discriminatory purpose well documented. To email in the email to intercept Crawford and AI, AI's now co-founder and distinguished researcher professor at NAU along with Meredith Whitaker co-founder of AI Now and the distinguished researcher scientist at NAU explain why the effect recognition is more worrying today than ever referring to two companies that use appearances to draw big conclusions about people from face from Faceception claiming that they can detect if someone is a terrorist from the face to higher view, mass recordings, job applicants to predict if they will be a good employee based on their facial micro expression, the ability to use machine vision and massive data analyst analysis to find correlations is leading to some suspect, very suspect claims, said Crawford. Faceception is purported to determine from appearance if someone is psychologically unbalanced, anxious, or charismatic. While Higher Review has ranked job applicants on the same basis. As with any computerized system of automatic visible judgment and decision making, the potential to be wrongly classified flag or tag is immense with effect recognition, particularly given in this in thin scientific basis, how would a person profiled by these systems contest the result? Crawford added. What happens when we rely on black box AI systems to judge the inferior life or worthiness of human beings? Some of these products cite deeply controversial theories that are long disputed in the psychological literature, but they are being treated by AI startups as fact. Can we say thought, thought criminologists here, right? What's worse than bad science passing judgment on anyone within the camera range is that the algorithms making these decisions are kept private by the firms then de- that develop them, safe from rigorous scrutiny behind the veil of trade secrecy. AI is now Whitaker single out corporate secrecy as co-founding the already problematic practices of effect rec- recognition. But, I mean, because of these technologies are being developed by private companies, which operate under corporate secrecy laws, our report makes a strong recommendation to per- for protections for ethical whistleblowers within these companies. Such whistleblowing will continue to be crucial, wrote Whitaker, because so many firms, data firms, treat privacy and transparency as a liability rather than a virtue. The justifications vary, but mostly AI developers disclaim all responsibility and it says up, it says up to customers to decide what to do with it. The civil science pair with the state of art computer engineering and placed in a void of accountability. What could go wrong? <laughs> I know that for sure. Chrissy thought criminals indeed, my friend. That's one of the areas why you have to look at all these facial recognition and so forth. 
facial scanning. And they want to pray this at the Detroit Atlanta and Detroit airports by Delta. Hallelujah, right? Well, according to this article, <laughs> it can backfire. So I can recommend everyone in Delta and anyone in the airline industry company wants to use these by scanners. You better start knowing the facts of all sides before making decisions because in long view, it can hurt you. Make or break your industry. You can't blame it on the unions or anything like that with, with this, with this uh, item. You can all look in the mirror if you choose, when you, if you choose poorly. So my endorsement is scrap the facial recognition programs at the airport in Atlanta, Terminal F for Delta. Don't either let them aboard. As one comedian Gallagher said. So one of those areas you have to really see. You want to want supply and demand, folks? I say, Delta needs us. More we need them. Case closed. That is true indeed. All right. Next one came out yesterday from Facebook. I mean, Internet, the Intercept. Here's Facebook's former private privacy Sherpa discussing how to harm Facebook privacy. Sam Biddle again came out yesterday, last night, December 5th, 7.20 p.m. to be exact. In 2015, rising star Stanford... University graduate, winner of 13th season of Survivor, and Facebook executive Yul Kron, Kron was profiled by a news outlet Fusion, which described him as a guy standing between Facebook and his next privacy disaster. Guiding companies, engineers through the dicey territory of personal data collection, Kron described himself in the piece of as a private Sherpa, but the day it was it, it published, Kwan was apparently chatting with other Facebook staffers about how the company could vacuum up the call logs of its users without the, without the Android operating system getting in the way of, by asking the, for the user for a specific permission according to confidential Facebook documents released by the British Parliament. The documentary part of the larger 250 page preliminary trove shows what appears to be copied and paste recap of an internal chat conversation between various Facebook staffers and Quan, who was then company's de deputy chief privacy officer and is currently working as a product management director according to his LinkedIn profile. The conversation centered around the internal push to change which data Facebook Android app has access to to grant the software the ability to record as a user's text message and call history to interact with Bluetooth beacons installed by physical stores and to offer better customized friend suggestions and news feed rankings. This will be a momentous decision for, a momentous decision for any company to say nothing of one with Facebook's privacy track record and reputation. Even in 2015 of spreading through ethical minefields this is a pretty high-risk thing to do from a PR perspective, but it appears that the growth team will change ahead and do it. Michael Limbaugh, a Facebook product manager, is quoted in the document as saying of change. And there's a nice little memo here. It is read on February 4th of 2015 with these particular statements. And you can just read this yourselves. You can read this yourselves, and um, I will post this on my everything on my Facebook page. But it's pretty cute, I would say. <laughs> I'm being ironic too. So. Crucially, the Bell commented, according to the document, such a privacy change would require Android users to essentially opt in. Android, he said, would present them with permission dialogue of soliciting their approval to share call logs when they were to upgrade it to a version of the app that collected the logs and text. Furthermore, the Facebook app itself would prompt users to opt into the feature. Through a notification referred to by LeBow as an opt-in 
opt-in, an, an app opt-in, Nux, Nux, or N-U-X, or exper new user experience. The Android dialogue was especially problematic. Such permission dialogues tank upgrade rates, LaBelle stated. But Quan appeared to later suggest that the company's engineers might be able to upgrade users to their log collecting version of the app without any such nagging from the phone's operating system. He also indicated the plan to obtain text messages had been dropped, according to the document. Based on the gross team initial testing, it seems this would allow us to upgrade users without subjecting them to an Android permission dialogue at all, he stated. Users will have to click to affect the upgrade he added, but he reiterated no permissions dialogue screen. It is not, it is not clear if Quan's comment about no permission dialogue screen applied to the opt-in notification within the Facebook app, but even if the Facebook app still sought permission to share call logs in such app, notices are generally designed expressly to get the user to consent and easy to miss or misinterpret it. Android users rely on standards clear dialogues with the operating system to inform them of serious changes in privacy. There is a good reason Facebook would want to avoid subjecting its users to screen dis displaying exactly what they're about to hand over the company. And there's a lot of stuff here about this. Okay, about, you know, the, co the, the conversation. And, um... It tells you all about it. A little interesting here. So, I would, um... Let you read it myself. Yourselves. It is not clear... How this specific discussion will resolve. But Facebook did eventually begin obtaining all call logs and text messages... From users of this messenger and Facebook-like apps for Android. This proves highly controversial when... Revealed in press accounts and by individuals posting on Twitter as receiving data Facebook had collected on them. Facebook insisted it had obtained permission for the phone log and text message collection, but some users and journalists said it had not. It's Facebook's cor corporate stance that the document released by the Parliament are presented in a way that is very misleading without additional context. The Intercept has asked both Facebook and Quan personally about what context is missing here, if any, and we'll update without their response. Interesting indeed. This is why you never, ever try to leave all your eggs in one basket, my friends. So that's one thing you have to really see. So that's one of the areas why these social media sites it's good to utilize, not use, have anything with um, the two personal on there. And I have friends of mine, you know, young women and so forth, and, you, and, and young men, you know, get real personal on there and it backfires. You know, you got stalkers, cyber stalkers and so forth, the people they want to get away from and they just want to like, and these folks try to hound on them and, put, and worry about everyone's drama. Other areas you guys really gotta look at, folks, when it comes to stuff like this. And the question is, how safe is Facebook? <laughs> well, people that know me understand what I do and the stuff I post. And I put a little few things in there personally, but I don't get too much detail to make into a personal log. When it comes to social media, you wanna share ideas, views, information, and so forth. You don't want to talk about your personal life because it can haunt you in the end. I know who my enemies are, but don't need to multiply them. So, use it wisely, but don't rely on it completely. Remember, Facebook and all these social media sites, it's a want, not a need. They need people to stay alive. If not... Then their, then their pocketbook hurts. So always think about that. Use common sense, friends. Next one here came out yesterday, too. 
from Electronic Frontier Foundation. I haven't talked about them in a while. Dear Tumblr, banning adult content won't make your site better, but it will harm sex positive communities. Social media platform Tumblr has announced a ban on so called adult content, a move made it seems in reaction to Tumblr's app being removed from Apple Apple App Store. But while making the app more available is in theory good for Tumblr users, in practice what about to happen is mass censorship of communities that have made Tumblr a positive experience for so many people in the first place. On December 3rd, Tumblr CEO Jeff D. Onofrio posted a lengthy mass submissive about a new policy titled, apparently, un- ironically, a better, more positive Tumblr. Instead of laying out the vision that is better than positive, D. Onofrio's post lays the bear bear the problems with the ban in on so called adult content. First of all, the policy is confusing and broad, leaving users in the lurch about what they can and cannot do to t- on Tumblr. Second, according to D on a forum for free on a free enforcement of the policy will be reliant on automated tools, the use of which is and always has been rife with problems. Third, the people will also will, will who will end up punish art porn bots or sex traffickers will already marginalize groups who have built sex and body positive communities on Tumblr. And finally, all these things come together to show just how many platforms and tech companies can get in between users and their freedom of expression. In D. Onofrino's post, he explains, in order to continue to fulfill Tumblr's promise and place in culture, especially if it evolves as it evolves, we must change. Go on to say that as part of the evolution, adult content will no longer be allowed on the platform, he further explains. We recognize Tumblr is also a place to speak freely about topics like art, sex, positivity, your relationship, your sexuality, and, per- and your personal journey. Why we want to make sure that we continue to foster this type of diversity of expression in our community so our new our policy strives to strike a balance on the face of on the face of it that is literally contradictory saying adult content is banned but that diversity of expression related to all those listed topics is it is pos- impossible to parse for the average user Tumblr's FAQ clarifying the definition of adult content that is that which includes photos videos or G- G- gifs that show real life human Human genitals for or female presenting nipples in, in, in any content, including photos, videos, gifs, and illustrations that depict sex acts, likewise compound this problem. New policy rule out almost all forms of nudity, female presenting nipples, in the particular this phrasing that has come under ridicule because, among other things, its policy bodies po- uh, polices bodies for what they look like based on a specific conception of gender and a body part that only uh, some cultures, but certainly not all, prohibit showing in public. On the other hand, the very next question has Tumblr claiming that female presenting nipples can be shown in some context. That written erotic, political, nudity, and art, art are permitted. These are the subjective categories that leave a lot of people on certain gr- on, on certain ground. Just like lo- look at Facebook with similar rules regarding nudity in the past few years. We've seen Copenhagen's Little Mermaid statue, a famous illustration of a woman licking an ice cream cone, a classic French painting, and a 16th century statue of the Roman god Neptune taken down by Facebook's content moderators under the restrictive policy. Tumblr has also decided that the way to make these subjective calls, what is art and what is adult content, is by using automated tools. D. Onofrio basically admits that these tools do not work properly, saying in his post that we're relying on automated tools to identify adult content and humans to help train and keep our systems in check. We know there will be mistakes. That is an understatement. Filters don't work. We've seen this in the copyright context many times, for example. YouTube's content ID system works by checking newly uploaded material against data based 
of copyright material and notifying copyright holders if there is a match. And it is a result in five corp corp uh, copyright claims being filed against a video of white noises. Five people claim that they literally own exclusive rights to static. Can we see a bizarre Twilight Zone here, right? And that's just when it comes to checking for copyright material. It's rather brazen of Tumblr to suggest it has the ability to develop and train a program to determine if something is porn. After all, there is literally a famous Supreme Court quote about the difficulty of defining obscenity. And so far as any informed observer would have predicted, Tumblr system is failing miserably. Among the items flagged are a picture of Pomeranian puppies, selfies of full clothed individuals, images of raw chicken, and much, much more. And despite the unafraid statement that art, discussion of sexuality, and politics wouldn't violate the terms, all those categories have been hit. When we look to groups about dominant culture, the problem is especially pernicious. Already an image of a video character on a pride flag, I selfie with the word lesbian, and somebody talking about a family death due to AIDS have all been flagged. Tumblr may think it's creating a better community, but it's destroying what it made it great in the first place. In, the, in his post, the Afrono, the um, um, Onofrio defends the policy by saying that the bottom line is that there are no shortages of sites on the internet that feature adult content. Indeed, the internet is full of porn, the overwhelming majority of, of which caters to heterosexual men but on Tumblr, people create sex-positive spaces on Tumblr that don't exist elsewhere. The people craft the portfolios of their work, all of it, on the platform. Those spaces are going to vanish. A business decision. Three paragraphs into his Better More Positive Manifesto, D. Onofrio states, Posting anything that's harmful to minors, including child pornography, is apparent and has no place in our, in our community. We've always had and always will have a zero tolerance policy for this type of content and ask that no no one no one confuse that with this new policy, child exploitation imagery is both vile and illegal. And the fact that Tumblr apparently wasn't eliminated, it shows that it needed to hire people to enforce its existing policies, not outsource jobs to algorithms. So why this why create this new wholesale ban. Absolutely. It's like totally absurd here. It is impossible to divorce the new policy from the fact that just a month prior to the announcement, Tumblr disappeared from the Apple App Store. And that, when asked about it, Tumblr spokesman, spokesperson, responded with a nearly the same words that D. Onofrio also used in his post. Apple's App Store has long acted as censors and gatekeepers of the internet. In 2010, Stephen jo Steve Jobs once said that the iParade offered f freedom from porn and there was a moral responsibility to keep porn off the iPhone. Apple has consistently forced dockering and rules for app developers, exerting control over how its users get experience the internet. The, co the comp company rules have even had the effect of silencing the press as in 2010 with a large-scale removal of apps to containing nudity impacted several mainstream German news publications. We don't know if Apple is the sole reason for these new rules. Tumblr also got blamed, banned this year in Indonesia because of pornography. For example, and may, and may just want to make itself as non-controversial as possible. And it's notable that Tumblr's new policy is largely in line with that of peers of Facebook, Microsoft, and YouTube, all of which heavily restrict so-called adult content. The end result, though, is that companies and governments are changing how users get to express themselves on the Internet. Multi-billion dollar corporate cor porn industry won't go away. Rather, what will... What are, well, are, what well, are places for people to f talk frankly, openly, and safely about sex and sexuality. Groups that are pushed out of the mainstream discussion 
or find themselves attacked in mainstream spaces are once again losing their voices. Well, well, well. So this is a no more song and dance. We'll have everything automated. It will solve our problems. <laughs> there will be there will be some mistakes. But I'll tell you one thing: there'll be a lot more than than the accuracy on their personal uh, uh, achievements. It's gonna blow back in their faces, my friends, and it's a shame about Tumblr. You know, and it's like these sites are following the herd, man. Herd conformity. Boo. Where are your cowbells? You go, who let the cows out? Very disappointing, indeed. But you know what? Like I said about social media sites, they need, like I said before, they need us more than we need them. I know you like, people like to interact, network. That's why That's why I use it. And of course, of course um, I have a Tumblr account as well. And I haven't got banned yet, so <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out. But... A real shame for D, uh, for, um, on a Frio. Very disappointed in him and what Tumblr is doing because it's going to be another Orwellian nightmare once again. Yeah, so we're going to do one more here on Good Faith. I'm just going to. This one came back from. Um, organic Prepper again. And this one's entitled, The Breakdown of Society in Venezuela is Something Desperate and Dangerous. It came out today. It was written by J. J. G. Martinez D. And it reads here, One of the most devastating facts that I recently realized we have to deal with is the changes in the very fabric of society associated with the collapse of this kind. We're seeing a breakdown of society we once had and it's turning into something desperate and dangerous. If the LEOs were a necessity, the possibility of access to a justice system like the one we had before is unlikely. Now that Venezuela, we were an excellent, we were excellent with this, but the cities, there are some degree of personal security, especially in some, some higher ranked neighborhood in Caracas. I remember the mayor of Chacao, Irene Sayez, Sayez, gaining huge prestige in this area as she founded a special police force with an emphasis of on, of, on honesty, ethical, and moral values. They were among the best selected personnel in the country during those years. Vice, violence, and corruption, unfortunately, that belongs to the past. Vice and corruption is widely spread in the entire society. Regardless of the stratus you look at, ranging from food, medicines, dealers in the streets up to highest levels, you know what I mean. I don't want to even imagine that it would be living in a big city with over one or two million people these days. Having been being robbed at knife point in my college years, I know that this is an experience that I don't want to repeat again. Statistically, the probabilities are much greater, and the modus operandi is much more, vi much more violent. If the robbers are drugged enough, they won't care to shoot anyone in the head just because. They know that any investigation will be overwhelmed by the humongous volume of dead bodies just in the very special cases, cases will an investigation be done. Resources, both humans and materials, are scarce. Workers are scarce now, as the large part of the migrant population has left their kids with their elders, with their grandmothers in the golden years mostly, in order to increase their mobility and chances to find more productive work faster. This means that the labor force in the country has decreased. A lot of young teachers and professors of all levels of education have left. Not to mention that the number of kids in the schools is less and less. Of course, this is a perfect for the current status quo. They intend to re-educate whoever's left from the shreds of the former society. Those who left and the most reluctant, those who understood the value of freedom and mo most freedom mostly. Those who feel the need to earn a decent life working and instead of waiting for some government food car that were smart enough to see what was coming. Three generations of Venezuelans will soon be extinct or gone. And what is the calacism coming? Is, what is this calacism coming? I see already that they need to, to generate the instinct of three generations just to control the next coming ones. It happened in Russia already. It ha happened in Cuba and in China. They dream of predation of the resources in South America 
a need to wipe out resistance of their indigenous population, indigenous population before they do that. Too bad for them, this person who writes, for you happens to be a member of such population. That won't be achieved. Our soil is about to be stained with the filthy rotting carcasses of the invaders. Happened before, it's just, it's just about to happen now. My generation and that one after me had enough resilience to leave and work in other countries. My president generation is slowly dying because of the lack of medicines and proper feeding in their golden years. The generation after me has been unable to study and progress because it can't feed itself nor have any access to medical care. Much fewer good paid jobs or housing. Is it, it is a social holocaust. Do you see what I mean about the social holocaust these bands has generated? Do you think I am exaggerating? No one deserves that. We didn't even vote for this. Our national identification records were intervened by the Cubans under Hugo's regime. Check the facts. Check the news websites of those years between 2003 and 2014, 2012 and 2014. The election system. An electronic platform has been hacked and is not reliable any longer. Smaratic, the company was once in charge of our election, had been declared that they cannot offer trustable results any longer and then flood the country in a hurry because thugs in power were going to put them in jail with a crude at $120. That's $120 a barrel, folks. It becomes easy to promise an allowance for each mother and her kids under $60 a barrel. Well, you are lucky if you can continue sitting in the chair without being killed by a bunch of angry people. Those stories I read about people in Cuba that worked in the state-owned cement company that stole a couple of spoons each day from the transporting belt in their pockets to ask some improvements to their homes had become the day-to-day -day now in my Venezuela. Not just with cement, because all the production is controlled by the military and goes to large buildings that are being built in a hurry. Property of thugs that need to launder as much money as possible. Venezuela is dying. Come on, people. Anyone who believes that this country is not dying should, should, take th should take things seriously in taking a plane and see by themselves. I guarantee a nice, nice welcome committee in the airport. Any foreigner will be, will be seen as a potential spy by the Praetorian, Praetorian Guards. Crime Inc. has taken over because plenty of good people have left. Don't you believe me? I've seen videos of lots of Arab-looking guys in fancy restaurants and discos in white toilets without plates, highly illegal there, surrounded by a bunch of prepaid-looking night shift sex workers, both males and females. While well, before, it was normal to see your average goofy college kid crowd, college, ooh, college student crowd, looking for some fun. The crowds are now, now are Chinese and Arabs, full-grown men with lots of girls and young men in tight clothes. While there are no women in these crowds other than the ones they hire, perhaps they are back in their countries. While these guys are on duty as an invading army in my country, that's the question. I will leave that question open. Food and medicine traffickers, the most despicable criminals to me, have increased their power. They pay the gangsters to protect them, working undercover, it's applied to all sides of businesses, business, promoting inflation even in dollars. There is no reason for something cost seven dollars one day should reach ten to twelve the next week. This is has this has not happened even in countries devastated by war. Things are not much better in rural parts of Venezuela. Out of the cities where the farms are, things are not not much better. Neither. The problem with drug consumption and trafficking has undermined society foundations. Even our country people that always enjoy the appreciation given their honest restitute and correct behavior values that came to have great value after generations of civil war in the last half of the 1800s and the discipline of the later dictatorships that ruled with an iron fist where criminals were used, be used where criminals were used as labor slave force. The impact of drugs and other deviations in the regular life standards in small 
rural communities is devastating because the younger generations refuse to work in the fields, prefer the easy way in order to sustain their vices, trafficking whenever they can. The poor commute the poorest farmer communities have been contaminated with drug user hutches with, with tragedies like junkies killing their entire families in drug induced paranoia attacks. I worked all over the country and I could see when there was a weekly and daily newspapers, most of them have been called and closed, excuse me, closed and or censored by the ruling mafia. How this increased in the last 15, 20 years. That's very disturbing, of course. This all seems to be by design. I don't have any doubt that this was this was some sort of silent, silent politics, approved and encouraged to a higher levels to weaken even more our former social fabric. This society, this breakdown of society is by design. A confirmation for this, at least for me, is to promise. Promise only because. Promise only because was never provided to single moms with monthly allowances for every kid they have, encouraging women to brook procreate like there is no tomorrow without the means of saying that pile of children is asking for trouble. I it is set a terrible weight over the shoulders of the next generation of society. This is true for every society and every economy, no matter how strong it is or how old that society is becoming. Of course, we all know what kind of criminals that bunch of commies are. Remedies, solution. Remedies, solution, sure. Restrain the procreation possibilities, the two of them. For a single mom, after a third pregnancy, sterilization mandatory by minor protection law. Encouraging single moms to work from home. Providing health care and feeding if they had a home and able to host one orphan or abandoned child. So social workers sh should know better than I that I do that do I do, and I know there has been a relative success in other countries. Our culture has a strong moral and respect for the meritorial order. Aunts, grandmas have identified a definite role in our society as mother's substitute. Society has become more volatile. There is a huge resentment against the ruling mafia, I can tell you for sure, and a deep fear, but that's exactly the part that makes the situation so volatile and dangerous. This is all over the place, and they are slowly deploying National Guards all over the country because they know it's the only way to contain the pressure. Former facilities of the state-owned oil company have been conceded to military personnel. It's happened in Iraq to, to under Saddam, as far as I know. Not surprising, a couple of years later, they're asking for redemption, rendition to the coalition troops. In order to improve uh, personal security in small communities, strong action should be taken. Of course, LEOs will have to feel support of their community, unless they have some kind of privileges that don't want to lose. And they will do... the and they will have to do their jobs so their place in the community itself does not end by replacing them, so to speak. Those who use drugs or need alcohol and can't be useful to the community as a working member will face the worst time of their lives, detoxed by a lack of substance. I have listened to some stories about gangs entirely drugged before storming a farm. This is no joke. Four guys each with well-positioned arrows sticking from their chest, legs, or arms can still be a threat if they are high enough, if they are allowed to get closer. Those officers reading perhaps would like to share their experience. However, defending ourselves is a one-way ticket and must be used, must be carefully addressed. With some luck, homes may, may not be harmed if the possibility of being very well defended is made evident, and I like silent weapons because of the intrinsic message they offer. If there's no sound, nobody is alarmed, and nobody is going to look for the trespasser, neither. Thanks for your support, fellows, and your strong and encouraged and your encouraging comments. Be safe, and may the good good Lord bless you all.
Interesting indeed. And he was a uh, upper class, middle up class professional. He worked in all state farm, all state companies, has a bachelor's degree, was one of the best national universities. He's a, fam he's a father of four, too. Very interesting because um, one thing about government, when you have tyranny, it, be it becomes widespread. You want to destroy the cancer or m minimize it the best you can. Every government has issues. You always got to make that aware. And everyone, folks, and a lot of folks out there support the hype. Look what happened in the long run. Blowback. Everyone's got to be more morally inclined. Work in the small communities. Help work together. Love your neighbors. From the ground, from the bottom up. Not the top down. And I, and I, and I listen to both sides. What's going on in Venezuela. U.S. intervention and all that too. But one thing you got to say about government. Tell me which country have saints, historically speaking, when it comes to this particular institution. You won't get much. And of course, when they did the victim disarmament program, that didn't help out either. You could thank their government for that. That's got to be revived. Every community should learn about nullification. Or start kicking out your corrupt leaders, your corrupt servants. Going in dingous, um, dingous um, m m movements that happens in New Mexico. I've seen videos on this from uh, Luke Radowski and Jeff Eric. We are changed in um, the Al Vigilante in Caracas. Very insane indeed. And as nice, I know a lot of them are, are fleeing to Colombia. Of course, you got to expect criminal elements. This is how, that's the nature of the beast. Not everyone there are leaving or bad folks. So hopefully one day, people will reconcile and get inspired. Go, get back what they belong, what they deserve. You got to let no, no one thing. Don't let government tread on you or your family. Because you, every single one of you individuals in that country have natural born rights to live freely. With that mindset and a good amount of solidarity, you scare them. Thomas Jefferson said it the best, the third president of the United States. People fear the government. It's tyranny. When the government fears its people, that's freedom. So, resist all forms of tyranny in that country of Venezuela and beyond, regardless what nation you inhabit. Have it. Okay, folks, that is it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us throughout your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or if you send something that's interesting, you want to check out, whatever you do, please address the correspondence with the quorum. I'll be posting all my social media sites and email addresses on my speaker page. Okay, once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.